the issues of good governance and the role of the middle class and the role of Kenyans as a whole, it's a very complex issue and there is no single approach to how then we can provide the ultimate solution to this very complicated, very complex issue. So what can we really do to help ourselves and to help this country? Because we have had, we have had the privilege of living in other places where in as much as you may not be extremely privileged, but you have access to good public facilities. You pay taxes for them and you get your money's worth. We don't have to die to improve our good governance. I would like you to just go to the website of the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights and read the four reports that we did in 2017, 2018 on the electoral process. And you see how this shifting image of the middle class is there and yet it is not there. I'd like to ask, is there um, a financial bracket for the middle class? Somebody was telling me that if you earn between 24,000 and 200,000, then you're the quintessential Kenyan middle class. Either way, whether you are spending or earning 200,000, I think it plays within the context of the country and the country's economic um, positioning at the moment. It plays in context with the economic positioning of the country. It plays in context with the, um, the, with the key amenities, so the primary things that people are seeking. So it's, it's the things that you're able to acquire, even with the choices you're able to make, consciously or not. It's the, you know, it's, it's, it's the by the way conversation you will have about, I will use an alternative route when going to work. I think in this country, the difference between the high class, or whatever you want to call them, and the low class is very wide. And that opens up a possibility of uh, a definition of the middle class being divided into three other sections. The upper middle class, the middle middle class, and the low middle class. And even maybe more. It's a, it's a huge group here of those who are on the threshold of the middle class, the middle class, and as we were told, others who have skipped to the rest, the higher one. So middle class, they're in the middle. They are not poor but they are also not rich. These are the people who any tectonic shift in the, you know, in the, um, you know, social economic factors uh, would very easily um, uh, force them actually in either way. And I want to know, you know, as middle class, we are stratified and that's, I think that has come to the fore, but is there a way that we can bank and I want to know that I have a critical mass that I can go in with or I can, you know, I, we can hold hands, you know, link hands together and move together as all potential leaders for the country who want to make a change for good. Yeah, and I don't just remain in my space and just say I'm comfortable and I'll do the middle class things that we all do uh, to stay afloat and, and, you know, just to make myself and my family comfortable. I want to move out of that space. We do have certain opportunities in our hands and we have this privilege, but we don't seem to have a way of doing something collectively to achieve or at least contribute to the things that the middle class need to be doing. Yes, we sit in our spaces, you know, as individuals thinking that we are alone, we don't feel that there's a critical mass. Some of us want to offer ourselves for leadership. I do want to offer myself for leadership, but I sort of think um, I have fear. <laughs> Uh, and the fear is actually, maybe it's, it's not even so much inherent, it's from other people around me. But you know, how, but I just want to know, how can I put myself up for leadership and know that um, I will make it and get there and serve the people, uh, you know, knowing that and I have, a, I have a strong support network to make the change that we all desire. Your fear is very valid. Kenya is a very violent state especially when you're offering alternative thinking, alternative thought, alternative solutions. Kenya is a very violent state. It's a very extractive state. And then you, that's why I said we have to unpack the culture that has led us to where we are. And that is because every time I say something that happens to be the painful truth, it is always seen as an attack at someone. I remember talking to some parliamentarians a couple of years ago, who were my friends, and they said, oh, Korea, when you go to that place, I, you don't know what happens. You just, you know, you're sucked into this machine, you know. And I'm sort of thinking, do I want to be part of that? You know, they, these are people who are 
people of integrity, at least from what I knew, but they said, when you go in there, it's like, you know, the devil does take over on that end. And you're either with the devil or you're spat out. So I, I start thinking. So, I, so fear then becomes a part of me in that, do I want to be part of that system or do I, let me remain sane? And that's why a number of us probably don't offer ourselves for leadership, but I would like to. Put yourself uh, up for leadership. And, 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 and sell your ideas, um, put your ideas in the market of ideas, and, um, and, and, and let's have lobby um, uh, people or like-minded people uh, to be able to, um, uh, to make the difference. It will be frustrating, it will be slow. They say Rome was not built in one day. It, it, is, it is going to take um, effort, it's going to take persistence. And so I would say um, that perhaps it's one should choose a struggle and I choose language as my struggle and that's why I will not tire to point out that um, the language we use when we talk about uh, matters governance, consequences of poor, bad governance, they, um, they use the language that we use um, basically feeds our perception, our behavior, our, you know, tendency to just let politicians and public officers be, because the language we use, basically, you know, we are resigned, it's bora uhai and stuff like that, so. Understand that these people who are holding these positions didn't happen from nowhere. They came from somewhere. They've been building this rotten system that is perfectly functioning. So remember, even the mess that is there, is curated mess, it is fueled mess, it is supported, it works very well for the people who've built it. So if you want an alternative that works well for us, that protects us, that ensures that the things we want are achievable, we have to build it from the ground up. And it will take a while, that's why I said we still do it regardless of fear, and no matter how many times we fail, we keep at it. How many times it's, has someone vied for presidency and never got it, they'll still vie in 2022, and we know them, and I'm not mentioning names. But is it maybe necessary to teach students or those in schools about lobbying because we seem to know what we want uh, if you look at the social media and chit chats uh, with friends you realize people know what they want but they, they don't know how to get it and so maybe how to organize and mobilize all those kind of things Education has got to start from changing the language we use because that's then going to change our mindset and it's going to make us better advocates, make us better fighters. And should we teach lobbying in our schools? That was the question. And I will say yes, we need to. We're keen on lobbying to provide private solutions to public issues. So we are very good at mobilizing to uh, construct a road or to patch up a road instead of mobilizing to um, ask our county governments, ask our uh, national governments to make use of the taxes that we so painfully pay to put up the road. So it's not that we do not know how to lobby, it's just that we do not do it as we are supposed to do it. But now as, as Sheveners here, I see hope. Uh, the fact that we are discussing this um, as a topic, as a concern for the country, and we are largely agreed, if not all agreed, that um, um, there is need for change, then you already have a constituency. Um, I see a huge constituency around here. And the representatives here have their own constitu constituents elsewhere. But I would like to remind you that our first port of call for our interactions going forward is our WhatsApp group. Please, if you need you need people you want to hire, if you want to um, have change makers, your first port of call should be within the WhatsApp group. We have seen people get jobs, we have seen people get positions, get contacts through that WhatsApp group. So just be alive to that fact and more active within the group. I hope you're tweeting. Mm -hmm.